Hello, Dan again from Summitone. So in the previous videos, we have set up an FMOD project and linked up the ambience events in this Unity level. In this video, we'll be finishing it up by adding the gun and the gun shots. So first things first, we need to get a gun. So I'm going to go to the asset store and I'm going to search for gun 1911. And this gun 1911 pistol pack is what I was using. Uh, yours will say download again. I already have it installed. So I'm just going to import it. All import. And I'm going to just fix that. The texture wasn't imported as a normal map. And Unity requires it to be labeled a normal map for it to work correctly. So that's what the fix was. Oh, right, if you start seeing this, just go up here to Window. Lighting settings and click generate lighting. It takes a while, so I'm I'm not going to do that right now. But there, if you're uh, if you see warnings, that's where you go to fix those. So what I'm going to do is add that gun to our right controller because we added the teleporter on the left controller. So we're going to add it to the right controller. So what I'm going to do, go into my project. 1911 uh, prefabs, and I'm going to use uh, this one. And all I'm going to do is make it a child of the controller right. Fairly large, so I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to set the position to, to 0x minus point. 06 y and minus 0 0.075 and the rotation to 65 in the x and what that should do is set it so it is uh, positioned correctly in relation to the model which we can now turn off and on this gun we're going to add a component line render I'm going to uncheck world space and in my positions I'm going to set the Y to 0 0.7 and Z to element 1 to 100 and then the width is going to be 0.01 the white color uh, but we do need to create a material for this to use so I'm just going to put that in this folder create a material call this laser uh, I'm going to change the albedo also known as the color to red and turn on emission also to red and then back on our gun, I'm going to add that material to search laser. And you can see we have a pointer, nice laser pointer. I'm going to create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this controller gun. Open that up in Visual Studio and get rid of all of the mono behavior stuff. We're not going to extend a mono behavior. Uh, we are going to extend the Steam VR tracked controller. Uh, so, Steam VR. Tracked controller. And this will allow us to override the on clicked event. So we can say public override void on trigger clicked. And this will run when the trigger on the controller is clicked. 
So we are going to make a an event ref for fmod. So fmod unity dot event ref. And we're going to give it a public string. Call it a pistol fire event. And this will be assigned in the inspector. And then when we when we click the trigger, we want to play a one shot. Fmod unity dot runtime manager dot play one shot. And this takes that string, which is the path to the event. And then I'm going to give it transform dot position so that it plays at the location of the gun. And then back in Unity, we are going to attach that new script. To our controller object, not the model, uh, but the controller, because it needs to be on the same object as the tracked object. And we will link up our gunfire event, and we are good. Now, if we run this, we have our teleporter in the left hand. And our gun in the right hand. And it fires. And so next, we are going to add a new script to our project. I'm going to create it in C sharp. I'm going to call this target. In target, we are going to create a new script. It's going to be public. No, I'm going to call this play hit sound. Play hit sound. It's going to take a vector three. Called location. All it's going to do is play a one shot. So if my unity, that runtime manager, that play one shot, and we're going to give it the thing I haven't set up yet. I'm going to call it event. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to call this gun hit event. or gun hit EV and then give it location and I'm gonna go up here and set a public string gun hit event and link that up to the fmod event or make it an event ref Save that. Go back into Unity. So this script needs to go, this target script needs to go on any collider that we want to have play a sound when it gets hit by the gunshot. Uh, I'm going to just start with the ground for testing. And I'm going to just double check that this has a collider on it. So I'm looking at terrain near. And it has a mesh collider. And then I'm going to add target. And then I will link up bullet hit dirt. And back in our controller gun script, I need to add a little bit more. We're going to call that function we just made on the target class. Uh, but first we need to set up a just a public reference to the gun model. Public game object. 
I'm just going to call it gun. I'm going to make a max distance. I'm just going to initialize that to 100 for now. We're going to make a raycast. Uh, but first, I'm going to make a raycast hit so I can read some information from it. I'm going to call it hit. In an statement, we're going to say if physics dot raycast. And this returns a bool if it hits something. So that's why it's in an if statement. And we're going to say gun dot transform dot position. Gun dot transform dot forward. Out hit or max distance. What that says is we're going to start the raycast at the origin of the gun and go forward relative to the gun so that we're actually tracing the same line that the raycast or the that the same line that the laser pointer is tracing. And then we're going to get the information from the raycast hit. That's what the out hit means and we're going to only going to go for max distance. So if it goes any longer than that, we're not going to hit anything. Create a reference to the target. On that object and say hit dot transform. That theme object. Get component. So when we hit an object, get the target class from it. And as long as that is not null, tell the target to play its hit sound. And we need to give it hit.point, which is the exact location that the rake has to hit. And what this allows us to do is set our event based on the collider. Rather than doing a bunch of if statements and checking something's tagged with wood or something's tagged with dirt, we can just say, okay, collider, you know what uh, fmod sound you're supposed to play. So play that when you're hit at this location. And let's just test that. So, gun. And when we shoot the gun, we have record chase. So basically, we're pretty much set up. And this is a bit tedious, but go through every collider and assign it a target and add the fmod event that we want to play when it gets hit. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a little shortcut. This again is a prefab, so we're going to make use of that. So I'm going to add a component target, and these are plank piles, so I want to sound like wood. Uh, bullet hits wood. And then I can say apply. Then every one of these will have the bullet hit wood event on it. I'm just going to tuck, yeah, double check that it has a collider. So if it doesn't have a collider, it won't work. So this one, we actually have to put it on the colliders. So I can. Select all of these and add a component. Bullet hits wood again. And we can see that all of these have the event on them and then apply. And then all the other PF Plank Pile 2s will have the event on them. I have added colliders to the things that needed colliders, turned them on if they were off, and added the target script to pretty much everything in buildings and props. Uh, the only thing I didn't have is fish, because I don't have a fish impact right now. Might add that later.
the next thing we want to do is to go in this building right here and we're going to add a reverb room. So what I'm going to do is just create a new empty object. I'm going to call this reverb. I'm going to add a component, fmod GBR audio room. And we can see that it's kind of tiny, but it adds uh, essentially a collider that we can use and any sound that is emitted in this collider will be affected based on these parameters. So I'm going to approximate the size of the room here. And I'm just doing a rough approximation. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna say that the roof is, yeah, wood panel. Uh, and front and back are based on Z. That's the blue axis in Unity. Uh, front will be positive Z. So we will say transparent, because there's nothing there. And back, there's a little bit, but not really. But I do want to have it do something just for effect. And let's say it is a another plywood panel. And then right and left wall, uh, that's positive and negative X. And those are going to be transparent as well. And I'm going to go over here to the blacksmith and do the same thing. Add an empty game object. Rename it reverb. Add the GVR audio room. This one. Again, I'm going to approximate the size. And ceiling will be plywood, floor will be plywood, and then we have positive X, which is right, wood panel, oh, ceiling should be wood ceiling, my bad, and then left wall, we're going to call transparent. Because it's pretty much open. Eh, there's a little bit, but front and back will be plywood panel, plywood panel. And I'm just approximating what the sound is going to be. I'm not exactly sure if that's going to work out perfectly. So let's go ahead and test that. And so we can hear that the reverb is affected by the different sides of the room. And that'll be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial series. It was a lot of fun to make, and I hope it demonstrates the core features of VR audio for you. Please let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to hear from you.